Welcome everybody and thank you for coming to the ID session. My name is Sanchari Roy. I'm a senior lecturer here at the Department of International Development. The department itself is very interdisciplinary and it also sort of, you know, is very strongly reflected in the design of this particular program as you will see in a few slides. So my colleagues are other economists, political scientists, sociologists, social historians, anthropologists. So we are a very uh, interdisciplinary department. We are very international not only in our own research, but also in terms of where we come from. So we get very international composition of our students. And this all speaks to how this particular program is really uh, gathering a lot of pace and a lot of interest across the student community. We are a relatively new department and a relatively new program. Um, our first graduates from this program are hitting the, uh, the job market. They've hit the job market and are sort of, you know, going out there. The key sort of distinctive aspect of this program, apart from its very strong interdisciplinarity in terms of understanding key themes of development and key concept of development, is its focus on emerging economies. And this is where we believe, and I think all of you will agree, most of the action is in terms of pushing the global trajectory of growth. So a lot of the focus of this particular program is on emerging economies, for example, on China, on India, other parts of South Asia, Southeast Asia, Latin America, parts of Africa, where basically the global trajectories are being pushed forward by very innovative ways. And we juxtapose this understanding of the global, of the new global economies with sort of traditional and mainstream understanding of development studies and international development that may have emerged from mature economies in the past, right? So this is about giving you a flavor of giving you a flavor and a strong grounding in key development concepts and theories, but also bringing it up to the present and bringing it re making it really contemporary in terms of where actually the innovation and the excitement is on the global frontier, right? And this specific focus on emerging economies is really what sets us apart as an international development BA program. None of the other uh, ID programs that you will see uh, in terms of the undergraduate degrees offered across the UK have this specific focus and I believe this is where uh, the understanding of development studies is going and this is really a lot in demand amongst our students as we can see in terms of the number of people who've turned up for this talk and also amongst employers. So you will be studying as part of this program how these sort of emerging economies, these new economies, are promoting economic, political, social development and growth in new and often innovative forms, right? And this is basically bringing in the interdisciplinarity and the sort of, sort of uh, disciplinary understandings from politics, from economics, from sociology, from history to bear upon interpreting and understanding these interesting aspects of new growth trajectories. You must be looking at other universities as well, but partly just to sort of situate our international development program within the King's context, you would already gotten a flavor of how interdisciplinary King's is per se, just across its own faculties. It's a huge university with a strong reputation and ranking in academics, in teaching, in research. We are ranked top 25 in the world and top 10 in the UK, and it varies depending on which ranking you look at within the UK between four and, and seven. And um, our London location is also very important for this particular program in particular and for Kings uh, in general, particularly because we are at the heart of development activity in London. And this is a locational advantage that we really, really uh, uh, sort of, you know, use to our full, uh, full, to the full potential, not just in terms of exposing our students to a whole host of uh, development activities, development excitement, exciting opportunities, and so on and so forth, but also has direct implications for career and internship opportunities. As I have been speaking uh, to a few of you uh, at our subject hub previously, King's has a very effective and efficient <laughs> career service service which sort of has a lot of connections across the developing world in terms of internship opportunities and job opportunities which is very centrally managed but really sort of you know is focused on the student and their student experiences and their and their preferences and that is something also that really builds on the L London location. Finally I will probably have a little bit of time at the end to tell you in a bit more detail about the study abroad option but just in a nutshell this degree program is a three-year program 
but it allows you the opportunity of taking out a year abroad. Okay? So between your second and your third year, you can uh, take a year abroad and go and do, take up sort of courses and, and uh, sort of, you know, modules depending on your preference in your geographical area of preference in uh, one of our uh, partner universities. So in terms of program structure, as I was saying, it's a three-year program. Year one is your foundational year, okay? So you do, uh, you take up sort of modules which are specifically focused on introducing students to the key sort of concepts and the theories of development studies and international development from key core disciplinary perspectives, okay? So I teach the year one module on economics where essentially we are introducing our students to key economic theories of development and growth and how those relate to international growth trajectories across the uh, emerging economy landscape, right? You will take other modules with my, um, with my colleagues in year one, which focus, let's say, on politics or on history or on the social aspect of development. All of these are compulsory. Year two onwards, you are able to now shape your learning depending on your preference. So one of the pathways is an economics pathway, the second one is a social justice pathway, and the third one is a politics pathway. So if, for instance, you decide to follow the economics pathway, you can take up economics-oriented modules, so on microeconomics, macroeconomics, econometrics, advanced topics, development economics, a whole bunch of sort of economics choice modules that will really help you dig deeper into the economics underpinnings of the key development theories you've learned. Alternatively, you could want to focus on politics, right? So you want to take up more of the politics-oriented modules to really shape your learning along that particular pathway. So we have a whole host of options that are available to you, and you can really choose and pick ones that suit your taste and preferences. Along with these, you will also ha have the opportunity to take up options from other departments, from, <coughs> excuse me, from political economy, for example, from the business school, uh, if you're interested in sort of bringing a management flavor into some of your learning, uh, from other departments. So there is a lot of cross-disciplinary modules on offer. We do a fair amount of cross-departmental teaching, which really allows you to open up your learning and, suit, uh, and shape it according to your preferences. However, in the second year, you still have a couple of compulsory modules to take. One of them is development theory, which will build on what you have learned year one. And the second one is on methods. So in terms of uh, having a holistic understanding and a holistic learning of international development, you really need a good grounding on methods. So that's what the second year module is about, which is a compulsory module where you will be doing both qualitative and quantitative methods for, with us. Okay? So this is to enable you to actually be able to interpret research you know, critically, giving you a sense of you know, what are the key methods that underlie development research. That's year two. Year three will continue to allow you to have more opportunities to uh, sort of, you know, choose options according to your preferences. So this is again going on to advanced disciplinary and uh, analytical skills that will essentially be required in the field of international development and beyond. So there are again a whole host of options on offer. Along with all of this, you are also required to write a dissertation, which is an undergraduate thesis uh, in year three where you will be allocated to uh, one, a particular faculty advisor, right, who will guide you through the process of doing a piece of fairly independent research. And you would be surprised at the level of passion and at the level of excitement that some of my students eventually go on to display as far as their dissertation is concerned, even having been a bit nervous to start with. It's, it's just an amazing process to watch in terms of transition. And um, the dissertation always has a huge sort of, you know, benefit um, in terms of, you know, if you want to pursue, uh, let's say, a job in the international sector or you want to go on to do a, a master's. It really is a piece of work that you own and you can really talk about in a very, very deep and, and, and clear way. And the range of uh, theses that we've had submitted uh, and sort of examined is, is really uh, exciting and, and very diverse. So if you're interested in a bit more detail, because this is just a snapshot, please do go on to our website and you will have a l much larger sort of, you know, a much deeper rather uh, uh, insight into the kind of courses that you can take and how you can progress within this particular program. 
I also did want to very briefly mention about the option of studying a language within King's. So there are modern languages that are offered by the King's Modern Languages Center, and a lot of information is available on their website here. If the program is part of the degree, then the language courses are free. Unfortunately, none of the programs are actually, none of the languages are actually part of the ID program, so you do have to pay, but it is a, a fairly subsidized, you know, rate, which allows you to really learn a particular language if you're interested in a specific region and you want to go and work there or maybe do an internship. So it really complements your learning, and this kind of opportunity exists within King's, which is actually really great. Quick word about teaching style, and this might be, uh, sort of you know be useful for uh, students starting an undergraduate degree. In terms of some of it might have been different from what you have been exposed to previously. So the typical teaching style is that you will have a two-hour lecture, okay, and you will also have smaller and more intimate setting for a seminar discussion, okay. So for instance, when I teach economics uh, in my year one, let's say I will focus on one particular topic. Okay, so let's say I focus on poverty. Okay, and then I give you the a, a sort of a broad overview of the key theories, of the key concepts, of the key debates. Maybe introduce you to some of the seminal studies and works and papers and books. And then, at least in my module, there will be let's say a small assignment that is based on what you have learned with me in the lecture which you will then go home and sort of work on, come back prepared, and then you will discuss that with your seminar leaders. The seminar leaders in our department are typically advanced PhD students or teaching fellows. So this is kind of a two-way complementary system of lecture theater learning where, you know, you're all together being instructed in, on, on sort of, you know, broad concepts combined with a smaller, more intimate setting where you can really engage with the topic, you can engage with your co-students, you can engage with the seminar leader to give you a deeper understanding of that topic. And this is done for every, every week. A little bit about assessment because this is something that students are often interested in understanding. Um, so assessment uh, are sort of, you know, mixed. There could be various types. There could be a final year exam. There could be a fairly sort of, you know, detailed essay or sort of, you know, more uh, uh, sh sort of, you know, short term coursework that you may have to uh, do within the, the spectrum of that particular term. So it's uh, typically a mix. Oftentimes, essays do uh, dominate in terms of the share of uh, grade that they carry, but some modules also have a bigger focus on essays, so it's always a nice mix and varies from module to module. So in the few remaining minutes that I have, let me tell you a little bit more about the study abroad option. In terms of destination, as I was saying earlier, so lots of you know, uh, destinations in South Asia, in Latin America, in uh, North America, and various uh, other destinations. In terms of the finances, if you are working, if you're going to a King's Partner University, then you pay a fee to King's, and there are no specific alt other tuition fees, however, you're still responsible for your own living and travel expenses, okay? We have a, a sort of, you know, dedicated faculty liaison for study abroad program. If you're interested, you can look her up on our website and she'd be happy to answer specific questions that you might have. And there is obviously a lot more information available on our website, so do have a look if you're interested. In terms of internships and careers, again, we do have a faculty liaison who sort of, you know, deals with this in, in, uh, in particular. However, just broadly speaking, potential ca careers for our students have been in international development sector in the UK and beyond, consultancy organizations, private sector companies with global oper operations, government offices. There is an increasing interest in terms of the private sector within London or beyond, primarily because of the holistic nature of this particular program, and we really want to build on that going forward. We are relatively new, but this is really showing very strong signs of progress going forward, it's that, if that's your interest. Alternatively, of course, you know, working within NGOs, working within the uh, um, consultancy sector is always a very attractive destination for our students. The careers office is a service that King's provides, and there are lots of opportunities available, both at the internship level and sort of in terms of connections to, you know, the job market. So that's something that really uh, our students uh, like to take full advantage of. 
I will end with a brief snapshot into the kind of research our faculty is doing. I've already told you that we are very interdisciplinary, very international in our sort of focus, in our research, in our broad overviews and haven't listed them here but if you're definitely if you're interested do definitely have a look at our websites. We have people working on uh, race and identity, we have people working on global inequalities, we have people working on gender like myself, we have people working on transition uh, uh, in terms of poverty and sort of social mobility in Latin America, uh, global health. So a whole ro range of sort of, you know, uh, topics that relate uh, to international development from a very diverse uh, regional perspective. So that's about it in terms of my spiel. Thank you.